In this video, I'm gonna show you how to poison op caches. I'm gonna show you how to poison DNS. I'm gonna show you how to intercept passwords when someone is using HTTPS. We're gonna use an older Windows application to do this. Yes, I'm gonna show you how to do all of those kind of hacks using a Windows application rather than using Linux. This application has been around for many, many years. Kane Enable used to be a fantastic application for hacking networks using a Windows computer. Not so easy to find it these days, but in this series, I'll show you how to download it, how to install it, and how to use it to implement hacks on a network. There's a lot of great functionality in Kane Enable, very easy to poison op caches on a wireless network as an example, and get someone's traffic to be sent via your computer to the internet, and very easy to capture all their usernames and passwords using this application. Fortunately today, Browsers such as Chrome have implemented a lot of security mechanisms to try and stop these kind of attacks. But it's still easy to hack op, as an example. Still easy to hack DNS, to poison the op caches and DNS caches on computers. Much more difficult to intercept passwords when using HTTPS. The information that I'm sharing here is for educational purposes only. Please don't go and do something stupid and land up in jail. Use this to understand why you need to protect networks. Now in this example, I'm running a Windows 10 virtual machine on my Mac. I don't suggest you install the software on your primary Windows computer, rather run it within a virtual machine because Windows is gonna see this as a virus or malicious software you're going to wanna to run this on a virtual machine or a PC that you can disable antivirus on. I'll show you in a subsequent video how to get Kane Enable up and running on a Windows 10 computer, but let me show you why you need to be careful with DNS, show you why you need to be careful with your networks. Okay, in Kane Enable, I can scan for MAC addresses in my subnet or a range of IP addresses. There are various tests that you can use all tests, as an example, will allow me to run a whole bunch of tests. This takes longer, so I won't do that. I'll simply run a basic test to discover MAC addresses in my topology. You may want to run additional tests, as an example, if devices on your network are not being discovered. But in our example, the device of interest is this device, 192.168.1.132. That's the Windows laptop over there, and I'm controlling that Windows laptop from my Mac just makes it easier to do the recordings. But notice on this Windows laptop, I can open up a CMD prompt. Back in Kane, I have an option to enable ARP poisoning. So under APR, I can click here and then click in this white space to add devices so that I can poison the ARP caches. ARP or address resolution protocol is used on ethernet and wireless networks to determine the MAC address of another device. So as an example, if you send traffic to your default gateway or your internet router, your Windows computer needs to know the MAC address to send that traffic to on the wireless network or on the ethernet network. So back on my Windows computer, if I type ARP-A, I can see all the MAC addresses that have been learnt. And in this case, I'll specify the MAC address of my default gateway. So I'll just clear the screen to make that easier to read. So ARP-A 192.168.1.254 shows me this MAC address. Now the reason I'm interested in this MAC address is because that's my default gateway. I can see that by going to control panel as an example, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and on my Wi-Fi adapter, if I double click on that, click on details, I can see my local IP address, my default gateways IP address, and my DNS server. Now there are a number of network interface cards on this laptop, but the only one that I'm using is the Wi-Fi adapter. So just to prove the point, I've disabled the VirtualBox network adapter, and the VMware network adapter and team viewer, the only network adapter that I'm currently using is my Wi-Fi network adapter. This laptop is connected to the network using Wi-Fi only, but I'm gonna manipulate the way this traffic is sent. So you can use what I'm showing you here to manipulate Wi-Fi networks. 
Again, IP address, default gateway, DNS server. So that's the device that I want to attack. I can see the MAC address of the default gateway ends in 3239. Back in Kane, I'm going to select that IP address and the IP address of the default gateway, 192.168.1254. Again, in Windows, I could determine my default gateway on this computer as an example, but I've shown you that already on the laptop. So I'm gonna poison the default gateway's MAC address. Again, the real MAC address ends in 3239. We can see that here once again, Kane shows me that, and I'm gonna click OK. So this is idle. Back on the PC, MAC address stays the same, but I'm now gonna start poisoning the ARP cache of that PC. So when I type this command again, notice the MAC address has actually changed to the MAC address of this local computer. ipconfig slash all on my hacking computer shows me the MAC address ending in DCD7. And notice that's what it's set to now on the victim computer. Now it is possible in Kane to spoof MAC addresses when you run up poisoning. So you can spoof your IP address and spoof your MAC address. But in this example, I'm simply using the actual MAC address of this virtual machine. So back on my victim computer, my Windows laptop over there, when I showed you those settings, it disabled the spoofing. So it went back to the original MAC address. Now it's back to being spoofed. Now that means that all traffic going from that device to its default gateway is being routed via my Kane computer or my hacking computer. So as an example, if the user goes to a website, in this case, apache.org is the default, I can see all that information within Kane. Now there are websites out there that aren't using HTTPS, and that's terrible. They should all be using HTTPS today. Apache is one of them. MIT is another one. In the UK, a bunch of university websites like Oxford University, Leeds University, the Open University and others are not using HTTPS and they should be. You shouldn't be using HTTP today, but some websites are doing that. So if this user tried to log into a website that wasn't encrypted, we'll be able to capture the traffic. But I'll show you how we can actually break HTTPS as well. But before I do that, let me show you DNS poisoning and then I'll show you how to capture HTTP sessions. So under DNS, let's create an entry here. I'll use the Open University as an example, but I'm gonna set the resolution of the Open University to my local IP address. IP address on this local computer is 192.168.1238. So when that PC over there does a DNS lookup for open.ac.uk, it's actually gonna end up on my computer. I could do the same thing with Facebook as an example. So facebook.com 192.168.1238. Could do that for any number of websites that I want to. Let's add the BBC here. So bbc.co.uk 192.168.1238. The reason this is working is that I'm running Internet Information Services Manager on my Windows 10 computer, and I've created a website on this computer, the default website. I've got a web page here in the root of the website. So let's see what that does. User on my laptop now. So this is the victim. Laptop over there opens up a web page going to open.ac.uk. They are prompted to enter their username and their password, but notice the IP address here. I've done a redirection. Now this is very simple. I could have done something a lot more complicated than this. All I've done here is set a redirection. When someone goes to the root of my website, I'm redirecting them to this index page. This index.html page is a copy of the website from the Open University. 
I literally went into Chrome and said, save page. And I saved the page onto my local computer. So in Kane at the moment, under passwords, I don't see HTTP passwords, but this user, if they put in a password, so peter at the boss dot L-O-L, and let's put a password in, and I won't tell you what the password is, but click sign in. Okay, the user's redirected back to the Open University website. They're not quite sure what happened. They may not save their password as an example, but notice they still have to sign in. But back in Kane, if I go to passwords, notice I can see the username and password of the user. Username is peter at theboss.lol, password is test123. I've been able to capture the username and password because I've poisoned the ARP cache as well as the DNS cache of that PC. On the victim PC, I'll open another command prompt. Notice if I use the command nslookup open.ac.uk, the address is 192.168.1.238. nslookup, this is basically doing a DNS lookup of that domain name, facebook.com. The IP address resolved is this. That's because I am poisoning those domain names. NSLOOKUP, bbc.co.uk. Notice IP address is this. On this victim PC, if I try to go to facebook.com, I would be redirected to the Open University website because that's the IP address that we are redirecting this domain to, bbc.co.uk. It's redirected to the Open University website, and that isn't actually the real website. That's the website running locally on this attacker computer. I'm running the website locally on this computer, and I'm just redirecting the person to this website. In Kane, if I turn off op poisoning and go back to my victim computer, and use the command nslookup facebook.com. And notice the IP address is not my local IP address. This is an IP address on the internet. nslookup bbc.co.uk, different IP address here. So just to prove the point once again, nslookup facebook, that's the IP address. But if I enable op poisoning, run that again, notice the IP address is my local computer. It's as simple as that to do op poisoning using Kane. But we could also intercept HTTPS and HTTP sessions. So if I remove this Facebook option, when we do NS lookup Facebook, it's back to the original IP address. And notice now, if I start the browser again and go to facebook.com, now it's still redirecting to that website. I need to flush the DNS cache. So let's see the options available with ipconfig, ipconfig slash flush DNS. Notice now I'm going to the correct website, facebook.com, but it's very, very slow here. But what's happening here is the traffic is actually being redirected through Kane because I'm still poisoning the op cache. Very, very slow here. So while we're waiting for that, let's try and hack another university website. So I'll go to my.mit. I'm warned that this connection isn't private. Certificate is invalid. But if I click on this option, I can actually go to that website. Same things happen with Facebook, but I can continue to the facebook.com website. Generally, you'll find that that won't happen. Generally, you'll find 
that it'll try and block you from going to that website if it's not using HTTPS and if the certificate is not valid. What's actually happening here, and it's complaining about the certificate, is that Kane has created a fake certificate and is presenting a fake certificate to this computer. And hence, it's complaining about an issue with HTTPS. So we may be using HTTPS here, but it's not secure because the certificate is not valid. Kane is once again fudging certificates here. It's created its own self-signed certificate and is presenting that to the web browser. This used to be a major problem in the past, but let's see what happens. I'll put in a username here, Peter, password, test123, click login. And what we should see is that Kane captures those details. And there you go. Kane has captured the username Peter password test123 off the MIT website because it's intercepting the HTTP session. Basically, the client is making a connection to Kane using HTTPS, and then Kane is talking to the actual website. So it's intercepting the HTTP traffic by presenting a fake certificate to the client. So notice the website says invalid username and password. So that was actually sent all the way to MIT, but that failed. We could try the same thing with Facebook. Now, this is very hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, I've actually connected to the real Facebook website. Browsers today are a lot better at capturing and stopping this kind of nonsense. But notice what I've been able to do here. I've been able to poison the op caches of a device. So back on my PC, my victim PC, I'll clear the screen, op-a, 192.168.1.254. I've been able to force the traffic to go to my attacking computer. MAC address on this computer ends once again in DCD7. So that is a fake MAC address. Traffic is actually going from that laptop to my computer and then to the internet gateway. So I'm intercepting all the traffic. What I've also been able to do is poison the DNS caches of the device. So this is not actually the IP address of the Open University. Once again, if I do nslookup mit.edu, that is the IP address of MIT, but all I need to do to poison that is to create an entry here, mit.edu, and I'll point it wherever I want to. Now, in my example, I haven't done a lot of fancy coding with a website, so it doesn't always work that well. I could create really good representations of the website. But notice here, originally, I got a DNS reply from Google with that IP address. Here, I still think I'm getting a DNS reply from Google, but the IP address I got is that. That is a poisoned DNS lookup. I am faking the DNS server here and giving you the wrong IP address. So once again, if you connect to open.ac.uk, that's not gonna take you to the right website. That's gonna take you to my local website running on this Windows computer. Not great coding here, but that's an example of poisoning DNS. And I've also shown you that Kane immediately creates fake certificates and allows me to intercept HTTPS traffic. Okay, so I was gonna show you how to install Kane Enable on a Windows 10 computer in this video, but the video's got too long, so I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. In this video, I've shown you how to poison ARP caches. I've shown you how to poison DNS caches. I've shown you how to intercept HTTPS connections and use invalid certificates to capture usernames and passwords. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble, wanna wish you all the very best.